a lot of plans on how to start this video and none of them felt right. So I'll just talk to you all. Hey, it's Romania Black and um, I've got my beverage here with me tonight because it feels needed. And I, I started watching Ace of the Diamond almost a year and a half ago, over a year and a half ago. It'll be two years this summer. And I'll be honest with y'all, when I started this series, I was really nervous because to tell the truth, I didn't like baseball <laughs> before starting this show at all. I didn't like it. Um, I never watched a game. I thought it was stupid. I didn't see the point of baseball. I thought you were just hitting a ball with a bat. I didn't get it. And so when this series won the poll, I was a little bit nervous because up until this point, every series I've watched on this channel, I've really enjoyed. I feel like every person that's voted has picked a series that they know is of high quality that is something that would be a series that I would like. And I was really nervous that I would get into this series and I just wouldn't be into it. I was like, oh, I'm not going to like it. It's about baseball. I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm just kind of doing like, and it's a, it was a long series, like 175 episodes and multiple volumes of manga. And I was like, I don't know if I want to dedicate myself to something I'm not going to enjoy. And then I got about six episodes in and realized I really liked this series. And then by the time I got to act two, I realized this was my favorite sports anime. And I went to a baseball game, which I've never been to, and did a video about it. And I'm already getting emotional and it's not a good sign. <laughs> and I, I decided by the time I got to season two of the anime, I was like, I'm gonna read the manga after this because the manga for act two keeps going. And I was really excited because I wanted to catch up. And everybody, by the time I had finished the act two, the, the semi-final game was pretty much done in the manga. And everybody's like, oh, you need to catch up. And so I've spent several, several months catching up. And right around the time that I finished volume 33, um, I had this comment come out on Patreon. I had no clue that the manga was about to end that they were finishing a back to. I had no clue. I had just ended volume 33 with us in the ninth inning as Izuki, as Itsuki, <laughs> Izuki, Itsuki, I'm thinking of Kuroko's basketball now, as Itsuki was hitting the ball towards the outfield and we had no clue what was going to happen. And then I got this comment saying the manga was going to end, end in the next volume and if you were on the Discord at the time, you probably know I was pretty devastated. <laughs> I I had to take a couple days off, y'all, because I was just, I was devastated. FYI, please don't tell me if a manga is ending while I'm reading the manga. Let me find that out on my own, because I was crushed, spiritually and emotionally crushed, because this series that I invested nearly two years into and was getting so excited on, it was on the eve of finishing that ending was spoiled to me. So I felt very, very sad. And honestly, it's been about three months and I've honestly held back as long as I could from reading this final volume. It's chapters 302 to 308. And I don't know what to think. I feel almost numb about it because I'm like, it doesn't seem real that, that the manga's ending with this game when there's so many unanswered questions, so many things left unsaid, so, like where's Raichi? <laughs> so many questions like, like what about Amahisa and, and Saomura? What about nationals? Are we gonna win? Are we gonna lose? I, you'd think that if the, if the manga was just ending, that they're gonna lose. That's what you think, right? You, you think they're gonna lose if the manga's ending because why would you end it if they win? Because you still have nationals. So, are they gonna do a time skip? I, I I don't know, but I was I I felt so nervous going into this volume because I don't want it to be over and I felt like it's Schrodinger's cat. If I just don't read it, it won't end. <laughs> but but I went back and I read chapters 364, which is about midway through volume 29, um, through chapters 301, Power of Love, um, 
this evening and I've sat down and I'm about to cry. And I told myself when I sat down, I'm like, Romania, you're not going to cry because you haven't even read the volume yet. But I'm really sad because I'm not joking. This is my favorite sports anime. It's I, I feel bad now. I've been collecting Haikyuu manga for the past, you know, year and a half. And now I don't want to anymore because I want Daya manga. <laughs> and I want fan merchandise from, from Ace of the Diamond. And it's it's just like, Kroko's basketball is great. Kroko's basketball has been a nice filling of the void from from Ace of the Diamond because it does character work similarly to Ace of the Diamond in a way that I really enjoy. And so Croco has been a nice way to kind of ease me through these harsh times when there isn't any Ace of the Diamond. But I'll be honest, it's been rough because I've really missed it. And I'm really sad reading this volume and it's not going to be good. <laughs> I'm trying to hold back. I don't usually cry or get emotional, but it's something like this is so powerful and the character work and it's been a while since I read something where the highs are such a reward and they make reading through the lows very much worth it and oh my gosh I've not even started reading it y'all I've got to dry it up oh just ashamed <laughs> So as I was reading, I, I'll talk about it at the end because we have, we got to get through the volume first. But I I did make note of my favorite moments so far rereading through the vinyls game. I, rereading, I did make note of my favorite moments. Um, I picked 12 because 10 wasn't enough. <laughs> so in order, uh, chronologically, I, I tried to order them by my favorites and I couldn't decide. So I was like, I'll just leave them chronologically. My chronologic favorite moments my, my top 12 so far uh, in the finals game leading up to chapter 302 has been, first of all, Sawamura having faith in Furuya on the, from the bullpen. Like, for, for this rivalry to grow. And that, that's the other thing. The rivalry between Sawamura and Furuya is unlike any other in sports anime, maybe anime in general that I've seen, where they've lifted each other up, made each other better, still been competitive, still tried to outdo each other, but it, it's so healthy and wonderful, and it exceeded any expectation I had of how their rivalry would go. I, just the moment Salmara being so humble and conceding that Furu is amazing, and he wants him to do well in this game. He doesn't want Furu to do bad so he can get on the mound sooner, like he may have in the past. But instead, he wants Furia to pitch as much as he can for their team, and it's beautiful. Now, granted, Salmer starts to get a little bit angsty when he's like, well, this is why Miyuki wanted to talk to him, and Koshi's over in the corner going, hey, what? <laughs> We're going to talk about And that's the other thing. I'm so sad this volume's going to end because I'm like, we've not had that communication post-game. We need to have that. So I have a feeling I'm going to have all these questions lingering after this game. And they're not going to have answers. So, just, uh. But yeah, so that, that was number one. Um, number two was, was both Sawamura and Miyuki gripping the railing while May's been pitching. Like, being so, like, inspired. Like, and it's on two different fronts. Sawamura looks, as May, looks to May as an inspiration for him to become a better pitcher. And Miyuki wants to beat May because it's that childhood friend rivalry. And it's just, it's so perfect how it's different for both of them. But they both want to take May down. And I want them to win so badly. And I don't know if it's going to happen or not. And then um, number three, as much as I don't like Shirakawa... That taste of victory squeeze play that gets the first run of the game in the fifth inning. Yeah, it's a good moment. It's a really good double spread. It's a great moment. You got to recognize it, even if you don't like his character. It's just such a good moment. And then you follow that up with number four, which is Asao's catch and in running into the wall when he caught the hit from, from Yama. Uh, it's just so good, right? Um, number five is Shirasu's damn, followed by getting hit by the pitch in a sore loser contest. I like, like, you know what? And honestly, knowing that it's ending this volume, as I was rereading the chapters for this game, it does become more apparent that, yeah, yeah, it is going to end here because we get backstories with all the characters. We get Zono's backstory. We get Shirasu's. We get Mei and Miyuki's childhood rivalry. We get Carlos' backstory. We get all these backstories of these characters leading up to this moment. And yeah, we could have nationals and we could go even in more detail. But this final match does feel like a final match. And I don't want it to end. 
Number six is Toku, Miyuki's dad, standing up in chapters 281 and then cheering for him in 282 when he hits the ball. Like, Toku standing up for his son and that whole deal, like, just gets you right in the, right in the gut, right? Uh, number seven is on the third try, Miyuki hitting May's ball in chapter 282 and getting Kuramuchi home to tie the game. Number eight is a chapters 285, 286, Furia's moment to shine and his backstory. That whole, like, Furia is such a divisive character. I feel like people either really like Furia or they get jealous of Furia because he often steals the thunder from Salamura. But I felt so proud of him in chapters 285 and 286 because we get to know Furia's backstory and we get to see him, like, like just coming out of his shell and finding his home with the team. When he tells Miyuki he wants to take this team to nationals, he doesn't want to go to nationals because Miyuki kind of frames it like, oh, well, you and I, we're going to get our revenge from Shimbatsu, from Shimbatsu, right? And he's like, I want to take my team. And just Furia wanting to take all of them. And Miyuki being like, oh, you have grown up a lot since last year. Number nine is Saomura's entrance and the deep breath on the mound. Like, I, not only did Saomura not totally botch for the first time. <laughs> well, I mean, my finals he was good. But didn't botch his first time coming out on the mound. But that deep breath moment and Itsuki realizing that he's set his own rhythm through that. And May getting kind of like a little worked up about it. Um, number 10 is Saotome giving Shirakawa the thumbs down after Shirakawa like goes head first into first base and Saotome being like, you told us not to do that. Nope. And doing that whole business. Number 11 is May's smile to Saomura from the dugout and calling Miyuki lucky for having him and Furuya on the team with him. Because it is, it's such a parallel back to season one and back to the first act where they were trying to, the entire goal of of our dear coach was to get them to work together to take down May and to beat Kunitomo's entire scheme of the one man show. And here it's actually working. So, so maybe, maybe it's still two to one. Maybe it will work. Maybe they can get through. Just gotta have like three, two out, three outs, three outs and we're done. Uh, and then number 12 is May's near home run. You've gotta be shitting me. And then telling Itsuki to prove his love by getting him home. And then we're here on chapter 302. It's been a long time coming ripping the band-aid off of this volume because I don't want to. <laughs> but I, it's been long enough and it's been long enough and we were talking in the Discord today about spring caution coming around and I was like, now nah, it's time. It's time. I made a goal for myself that when I got caught up with stuff in February, I would record it and it's February now. So it's time. So I'm, I've got all, I feel like an old lady at bingo. I've got all my talismans surrounding me. I have, um, I've been fortunate to have people on Patreon send me some amazing things. I'm someone from Japan. Some beautifully anonymous person sent me this jersey. Thank you. A Sato jersey. Got, got the Tokyo sleeve and everything. Um, uh, Zero Anti Zero sent me a great, wonderful art book, but also sent me uh, this nice figure of Miyuki as well as our, our sweet bean Salamura. So I have them beside me uh, watching this game, hopefully, as they both fall out of their stands. I'm giving luck that's, that Sato will win. Uh, I got this from Japan, this lovely little Raichi with his banana. Where he is, we don't know. Find us Raichi, TJ. Show us where our boy is. I need to know these things. I doubt we're going to get the answers to that in this volume. Be great if we did. Doubt we're going to find out. Um, speaking of Yakushi... Got this card too. It's got a Sonata, Raichi, and uh, our other boys, uh, Mishima and them on there. Got that. And then my favorite thing that's been back here on the shelf uh, the last couple months has been um, this image right here of our boys. I'm, I'm, I'm ready and I'm not ready. I've been told that there's a note. Uh, Kelsey in the Discord told me to look at it after I'm done reading. So that is my plan, is to pull it up when I'm done reading and come back and read it aloud to you all. Um, but I'm so, my stomach feels queasy. I'm so nervous because a part of me is like, I want them to win so bad. And that would be the perfect thing for this volume if they win and they beat May and they're able to go to nationals. But I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know. So we've got six chapters to find out. Six. 
They said in the Discord that I jinxed this, that the moment that I catch up, the moment I get caught up where I could read the next volume, it ends. That's the timing of this. I'm like, well, I don't know what to say to that. So, all right, y'all. I've wasted enough, enough of your time, 15 minutes. We just need to tear off the Band-Aid and do this. So we are going to read volume 34 of Ace of the Diamond, Act 2. Damn it. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one. And let's go. All right. feel numb. <laughs> I feel numb. I I feel like I, we, we got answers about Raichi, <laughs> which we'll talk about. I, I didn't take notes. I wanted to go back to the chapters individually and kind of celebrate them as they were since there's only, you know, eight chapters um, or 302, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7 chapters. Um, I... I, I feel, I don't feel angry about it ending where it ends. I, I feel very numb and frustrated because it does feel, I, the ending of the game just felt rushed, to be honest. It, it didn't feel, it felt surreal. It felt like at the moment that that last out happened, it was just like, oh, it's over. I, it, it just kind of felt not anticlimactic, but it felt so soon and sudden that like when you open up the volume and you're like, oh, there it is. And, and that was it. And I do, I do appreciate that he took three chapters to kind of give us resolution and, and to, to tease us for a second. I was like, TJ, what are you doing? And then to kind of set things up, but to set things up, but I, it just, there's still so much left unsaid and I, I don't know how to feel about it if I'm if I'm being honest. Um, I I have a, I have a, there was a response that he wrote. Um, there was a response that he wrote um, that Kelsey had, had sent me way back in October. I've got it here, October twenty sixth. It was sent to me. That's how long it's been. It's been over three months. It's been like five months actually. Oh, it's been October, November, November, December, December, January. Okay, so it's been nearly it's been a, a, three months and a half. Um, but it feels like five years, <laughs> but back in October, um, that she sent me that I've, I've not opened until now, but I wanted to read it. Apparently this was his response in terms of ending the series. Cause man, yeah, it just comes out of nowhere. It's like, okay, two chapters were done. And I'm sure everybody reading was like, wait, what? Why? Because you just made it to nationals and you're ending it. There was so much promise, so much potential. And so I wanted to read this. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm going to click on it now before we dive into the chapters and read it. But Terajima's response on ending the series. In terms of producti productivity, I haven't been able to keep the manuscript coming in at weekly pace. The number of drawings I'm unsatisfied with have increased. I didn't have time to do interviews. There are numerous other reasons, but most importantly, I myself didn't want to see Salmura go into a slump as a result of his own mind being muddled. And I didn't want to force the story forward and make decisions about everyone's careers and lives. So I decided to end Dia Weekly series here. I'm really thankful to my editor and the editorial department who listened to my selfishness until the end. For the time being, now that the manga has ended, I'll work on finishing the East Tokyo finals while taking my time to think about the future. Finally, I was very happy to be able to draw a foolishly grinning Salmura for the last panel. Mm. <sighs> I, I, there is some hope there because when he said he's working on finishing the East Tokyo finals, um, I mean, that that is hopeful that there, there's two ways of looking at it, I guess. On the one hand, on the one hand, if he's working on the finals and thinking about the future, then I can't see Terajima just entirely leaving the series where it's at because there's so much set up that that still could deserve some answers. But I do understand as well that pressure 
of doing it week to week. And when, and it sounds like, yeah, because the whole thing with Sal Murrah and the arm thing, like he ends up making it okay, where he's like, okay, no, don't worry. It's all just Sal Murrah, his arm's fine. It's just a little bit like Nori. If he just holds off on it, it'll be okay. It's just got to heal. It's just a little inflammation. I, I could see that if he was to move forward with the story where he would feel inclined to like make that angst go further. And I like the idea, we'll go back to the chapters. I like the idea that what Chris says, of course it's Chris and Pi that says it, of course it is, that what Chris says is kind of give Salmer the answer to the question that he was wondering about what Miyuki told Furuya. And we'll talk about that. But the only thing I'm kind of bummed about is that he didn't announce this <laughs> months before you know to give everybody a heads up that it just came out two chapters before it ended that's like the most that's like taking a baseball bat and being like oh by the way game's over and then do that and then and your your audience has no time to react i that is the only part that's frustrating is that it just ends with without anything I, I almost like you could wonder if maybe he could have done like monthly things being like I'm moving Daya to a monthly release instead of a weekly release. But you know what? I He's been doing it for so long. I don't blame him for deciding to take time off to finish it. It's just sad. I guess I just feel like bittersweet. Like it's the ultimate bittersweet feeling of wanting it to go on and having so many questions and so much potential but it does end on a high, so you can't be too mad because Salmer gets to come in and pitch and it ends on that high of them being May. And May, God, I I feel like Inashiro got an amazing resolution. May with Kunitomo? May with Miyuki? I would talk about this. I just, oh man. I feel like that was the moment of May moving on. But damn. There's just so much potential laid out on the table that I'm like, you're really going to end it all the way with all that laid out there? My only hope, my hope before we go into this volume and talk about it, my hope is that Terajima takes his time now. He built up that whole, we're gonna, we were going to have Tato versus Ugamori? Are you kidding me? My hope is that he builds up and figures out what he wants to do. And if he has to take his time on that, cool. But I... I would at least love an epilogue, even if we don't see the results of Nationals, because, you know, it, it, they're, they're going to win or lose at some point, right? At some point, as much as I would like to have seen Hongo versus Salmura, that was hinted at, like all of that, I, as long as we got like an epilogue chapter where we did find out what everybody did, that'd be amazing. That that would be great. I would feel... I would feel great if we got a volume, if you would if you would do like a, a mini series, a little eight chapter volume of an epilogue of Ace of the Diamond, that would be great. But because, yeah, the way that they end it, it does like it feels ending, but there's still like a part of you that's like, no, come on, there has to be more to the story. And I guess that's a testament to how good Ace of the Diamond is when you want to read more, you don't want it to end, you want it to keep going, that's the sign that it's a good series. When you've read something this long and you want it to keep going, that's the sign, right? Because I love our boys so much and I want to see more of them. And I was just kind of like, it. this was such like a, a reeling experience, but it's so bittersweet, right? So bittersweet. And I will... I will use Haikyuu as a comparison because we're at the manga point of this. Um, without spoiling anything, without spoiling anything, um, I feel like when Haikyuu ended, I, I feel this This gives me, this is, this is kind of a middle ground. Ace of the Diamond is a middle ground. I've read Slam Dunk. I've read Haikyuu all the way through. I've read Slam Dunk all the way through. And now Ace of the Diamond's at this stopping point with Act 2. Um, I don't feel like it's the end, the end. It doesn't feel like the end. Um, he's still thinking about the future, so he says it here. So that, that leads me to believe it's not over, over. But as it stands now, Slam Dunk is a very unsatisfying ending. It is it's probably one of the more disappointing manga endings for a sports anime. I, I feel like the sports anime that I've watched so far, I've not finished Free, um, and I've not finished Sarune. Um, Skate is not really a sports anime, but um, Run With The Wind is a very short, concise story that has a definitive conclusion. It's left kind of open-ended, but it has a definitive conclusion. But it's a short series, so I'm not really going to count it. I'm going to count the three of the manga. You have Slam Dunk, you have Haikyuu, and you have this. 
Um, Slam Dunk, I'm honestly really disappointed in the ending. Without spoiling anything, it it really ends abruptly. And I a part of me wonders if it's for the similar reason to this situation, if it is for a similar reason. But it just kind of just pitters off. It just pitters off and it, it ends without a lot of co things concluding and resolving. And I felt kind of disappointed by the end. I did feel kind of like, oh, that's it. I, I felt like wanting. I wanted more, but I, I wanted more because I didn't have enough to satisfy me with the conclusion. With this, I do feel I get, it does have a, a satisfying conclusion in the sense that it wraps things up and ties things together. And there aren't any big loose threads but there's still so many storylines that have so much potential that it's frustrating because I want it to keep going to address those storylines down the road. And if TJ decides to write the rest of it and give us more of Saomura, I honestly would be fine if they had Saomura going pro. If they talked about Saomura, if Act 3, if he wrote a short Act 3, if it would be just like the end of Salomura's third year, we cut to what Miyuki and May and them have been doing. We maybe flash back to see what Miyuki and them did. And then we decide what Salomura is going to do. If we had a couple volumes detailing that, that would be great. Like just act three is what Salomura does post Sado. But I don't know what we'll get. I don't know if Terajima will give us any more. Um, but I will say that probably, I this is still my favorite sports anime, by the way. <laughs> It's still my favorite because it's I'm so emotionally invested in it. I, I'm frustrated and that shows how much I like it. Um, it's still my favorite sports anime, but I will say, without spoiling anything, I think Haikyuu has a better ending as of this point. As of this point, the manga does. Because the manga with Haikyuu, Furudate gave us a lot of time to know that the end was coming and set everything up and it has a very it has a definitive ending but the ending opens up possibilities for the audience to realize okay this could extend beyond and now we can take the story and go where we want with it and it's very satisfying it's a very satisfying conclusion i'm very happy with it i wish as with any sports anime that you like you wish you could get more but the ending is very satisfying with this this is almost frustrating because it feels like there needs to be more and knowing Terajima is maybe planning it, but not saying anything is like, okay. So that, that's how I feel. I'm just, I feel like so bittersweet about it, but, but I'm glad that I have, that I've read this final volume. I'm glad I've tore off the bandaid. I want to talk about it with you all because we need to, but oh my God. So yeah. So, so Tadano, he kept it going. I, I, and then Yabe of all people coming up and giving the message. I'm, I'm glad. I honestly, I'm glad. I, I almost wanted Salmura in this moment in chapter 302. I wanted Salmura to be like, we got this. And to be like all riled up and loud. And he wasn't. It, but, but again, the pressure. Like he gets all excited and everybody's like, okay, we know we can prevail. We got this. And Nori's like, I'm there if you need me. And is like, I'm there if you need me. And what I love about this set of chapters is that Sal Mura, he's gone from being a character that was afraid when Furia and Nori said they had his back because he thought he was going to get swept out. Sal Mura, you know, back in season one, thought that when Nori was like, I got your back, Furia and I can come in if you need us to. Sal Mura was in his own head thinking, well, that means I'm not good enough. That means they think I'm going to need them to come in. And he was overthinking everything. Here, Sal Mura is confident enough to say, no, I'm reassured. Thank you. Knowing that you guys have my back makes me feel good. So I do appreciate that an awful lot. And then Yabe comes up to Batman. Yabe's drawn really, really great, right? He's drawn really great. And then the I love that I love that Yui is trying to yell over the cheers of the stadium and it's just too loud. But Sal Mura, I love the idea of Sal Mura. Like when he gets that look in his eyes and Koshu, Koshu, Koshu the whole time was thinking about Sal Mura and that bottle. He was like, he was like, what kind of pressure is he dealing with? Like, what's going on? Like, like Koshu is like narrow laser focused, right? That's one of the reasons I hope he does more with this series because I wanted more Koshu. I wanted more of his storyline. But man, May and Miyuki, they're, they're being like, oh, what's up with Sal Mura? And him with that expression. I want to get a picture of that. The expression of him as the ace. Yep, just with that fire, that fire under pressure, right? 
But I mean, Salamora, what I liked about this finals game, I mean, I do think the semifinals game is maybe my favorite because the chemistry between Salamora and Amahisa is amazing. And I feel like TJ, TJ likes that chemistry as well um, because of things. But I, I love that. I love that game. But what I liked about the finals game is that Naramiya, who's been built up as being infallible, and Salamura, who's on, who's on a roll, both of them still are human. And neither of them are made up to be OP. Like, I was really worried going into this final game that Naramiya would be the kind of pitcher that would be like this OP, like, unstoppable force. And then we'd have to, like, some BS to beat him. But no, from the get-go, Naramiya is like, he's not infallible. He's just freaking good. And that's the what's frustrating, right? But yeah, so chapter 303, Yabe, it just feels, I don't want to say it feels underwhelming, but... Yabe of all people to be like the one we're going up against, right? Not Carlos, not Shirakawa, but Yabe. I'm like, it, it's funny that the 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 cleanup crew is like Itsuki and then the ones that are like the ones we've not really even known up until this this game, right? It's kind of not underwhelming, but it's interesting. And so then yeah, he strikes against Yabe. And I love that Salmura is like, it's okay. Miyuki's going to catch any pitch that I throw. So I just need to do my best. And that's all I can do. And then, of course, everybody has a backstory with May, And we have little chibi May with his giant grin being like, do you want to come to Inishiro? You want to join my cult? Like, you know, May's like, come on, join me. Like, May gathers his little harem up with them. And when he says he was like, whenever Yabe said, have I become a player capable of living up to Naramiya's expectations. At that point, I knew he was going to get out, right? I knew he was going to get out at that point because it just seems like a trend that he gets, when players get inside their own heads too much and are thinking about other people rather than their own performance, it's like, nah, they're not going to do as good. And that's exactly what happens with him in this. And then that ball coming out of nowhere with the changeup. And he scoops it with one arm. But then I, God, Faruya. Yeah, Faruya definitely saves the day. He gets, and what I love about it is TJ, I, it's easy if you're a big Salamura fan to get frustrated because Faruya gets a lot of the glory, right? Which I'm right with y'all because it is frustrating that they're like, Faruya, you made the headlines. They all said it was your reason that you won the game. And it's like, it was Salamura and Faruya. Salamura is always getting the scraps, right? But what I do like about this is that TJ does treat Furuya as Salamura's rival, but also his teammate. And just like any other character in the series, he deserves character growth and development too. And what I appreciate about this moment is that Furuya, who was not a good outfielder at the start, has grown and is able to use his ability to pitch like Tojo to back up Salamura, like he said. And man, if he had gotten safe, if May had gotten safe, I was about to be like, are you freaking kidding me? But no, he gets out. And they call it. And that's, and then yeah, Faria's pitch saves the team. And he's like, mm, I like Faria taking a little victory stance. And Salamura, his big eyes, where he's like, Faria! Like his big eyes. Oh my God. I just, I love that part. It's so cute. Like Salmer's giant eyes, they're beautiful. And then May, being like laughing is the only thing I'm left to do when confronted with a returning throw like that. And Miki's like, our guys are pretty awesome, aren't they? I, God, we're going to talk about Miyuki and May. I, and TJ's thoughts on them. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. Yeah. I just, ooh. So, yeah, and so then we have J uh, Jinjuji, which, honestly, Jinjuji's up to bat. What the hell? And then Salmer is like every... And now this point here, where he's talking about Narmia and Furia, this this whole, this all goes back to Salamura and the Galaxy conversation where he got really depressed right before the game and was like, there's all these amazing pictures. How can I compare? Like, and we go back to that, and I was afraid... It was going to lead Salmer to like have a moment. They would have a moment of weakness because he talks about how May is amazing. 
He's not shown the ceiling of his ability. And the people who shut the audience up was Faruya. And Sal Mur is saying, every last one of them is amazing. And Miyuki's over there going like, what are you thinking, Sal Mur? And Miyuki has this look on his face like, well, what are you thinking? And so he thinks back to when Miyuki asked Faruya about, have you thought about going pro? And the funny thing of it all is, the funny thing of it all is that Sal Mura, he's questioning. He's like, he's like, I don't know. He's like, he's like, there's no end. And when we think back to that moment, when he first said there's no end, it seemed very melancholy. Like he was sad of the idea that there was a never ending line of a pitchers he would have to face up against and he'd never get to the top. Right. But that's not the case. Instead, he says, there are those who are even better, right? There's a much bigger world out there, right? Like, he's like, he's like, it's not just that there are better pitchers out there. He's like, there is no ladder. There are just infinite amount of people that are better, one better than the other. And he's like, I want to see it. And that moment, that moment where he's like, I want to see that world. He's like, I want to see those better pitchers. That moment is so good. Because it's Salamura. Salamura, this entire series, he's wanted to become the ace, but then it's like, what is he going to do after that? What's his goal after that? And we've never really seen him have a goal. He's just like, I made it to be an ace. I guess my goal is to stay here. But now he's like, no, I want to keep going. And the moment he says, he's like, I want to come even a step closer. He's like, I want to enter that world that they're in. I want to be a part of it. I want to come to the big kid's table. And he's like, I want to see what lies beyond. Let's go there together. <sighs> Let's go there together. Him, him and Miyuki. And I, I think that's another thing of why TJ has to quit. He has to quit the manga right here, right now. Because, yeah, we've still got nationals to go through. He's going to meet some of these pitchers and see some of that outside world. But then when the game, the games will eventually be over for nationals, right? They said there's like up to six games they play and that's it. Then it will be over. Then he won't be together with Miyuki, right? Then that won't be a thing. So it's like, okay, well, what do we do then, right? What do we do at that point? So I, I honestly wouldn't blame Terajima if he ended this act and then picks up the act with Miyuki going pro and leaving Sato and it like like the first chapter's graduation right where they all three graduate and we get like a tie we get a flashback to find out how nationals went we do all that and then we cut to graduation and then act three starts out with Miyuki being like I'm getting drafted and Miyuki and Saomura is like mm, now I've got to play without you for a year or he just skips that and goes to immediately when Salomar is over. And we find out what Miyuki's been doing the year in the meantime. And then it cuts back to them together. I, I don't know how they'll do it. But it's just everybody yelling and then him throwing. I love that picture of Salomar throwing that that pitch. It's great. I, I, I do think it's important that we've talked about it in the Discord. But the idea of the mangakas that doing this on a week-to-week -week basis is baffling to me. I get writer's block on day one. I can't imagine having to get a manuscript out, drawing, inking, lettering, having it all ready to go in a week. That's astounding to me. I, I can't imagine doing it unless you just had it all mapped out so far ahead of time. It's why I respect a lot of the sign-in magazines that do like monthly releases. They're longer chapters, but you got a month to plan out and draw and do all of that. So it's fascinating. But I don't blame Terajima for not wanting to be so burnt out that they want to stop while they're ahead and regroup and figure out what they want to do and then move forward. Like, I respect that, but damn, is it frustrating. And then, yeah, chapter three, the chapter 305, that's it. That That's kind of what was so shocking is that it's just, it's over. It's just three chapters in and we're done. And I'm like, whoa, the game's over. Oh my God. But... To, to be honest, it was all worth it to see Miyuki hugging Saomura. To see him lift Saomura off the ground and hug him. Hell yes, a three-hour game against Inishiro and all of them there. Like, that's, that's amazing. And then, 
I love it that Narmia, I love Narmia watched Miyuki hugging Saomura and was like, I want in on that. <laughs> He's like, I want that too. You can't hug Kazuya. No, I get to hug him. Like, God, that's so good. But, yeah, and then Furuya, I love that he gets, I love Furuya gets, like, picked up off the field, and he's like, what's happening? And then, yeah, and then poor Itsuki. Itsuki's just sobbing, and I, I feel like it relates to two characters from Kuroko's Basketball. Not gonna say who they are. You all know who they are if you've watched the series. But May being like, stand up, Itsuki. Etch that side of them celebrating into your retinas, and make sure that you'll be the ones in their place next year. Like, I, there were a lot of shipping things uh, confirmed in this episode, in this chapter volume. Um, I I do like Narmia and, and Itsuki, right? I do like them as a pairing. But honestly, nah, uh, Masa and May are where it's at. I, especially when, when May waited until everybody left and called Masa from his phone to talk to him personally, like before his parents, before anybody else to talk to him. I'm like, that is, that is boyfriend material right there. Nah, nah, man. Mm -mm. And then of course, Itsuki's one-sided unrequited love. He's like, but I wanted to be with you, May-san. And it's like, it, it could have been the other way around, right? It could have been the other way around. If they had lost, if Sato had lost, Miyuki would have probably been to Saomura and said the exact same thing. And Saomura would have said, I wanted to be with you, Miyuki. Would have been the same way, right? And then, May I like Kurmochi shaking Carlos's hand. Uh, like, Shirakawa shakes her Haruichi's hand. What the hell? He's like, nobody else wants to shake my hand. You will, won't you? And then the whole thing with May hugging him. I'm like, and grabbing his Jersey? I, I, I'll be honest with y'all. I feel like Terajima, I feel like Terajima is in on, they're in on it with us. They're in on Miyuki and May. Not, here's the thing. Miyuki does not like May romantically at all. No, no, no. Miyuki is not like that. Miyuki finds May as a rival, as competition. He's like, he's like, we're rivals, right? I feel like May did like Miyuki and wanted Miyuki so badly, but it was never going to happen. And so now he's just like, okay, fine. You want to move on? Well, I'm going to hug you first and make you. And I love that Samura's like, what? And Itsuki's like, you won't hug me, but you'll hug Miyuki. <laughs> just... And him being like, climb all the way to the top, Kazuya. And like grips his shirt and everything. And Kazuya's like, well... Yes. Okay. <laughs> I feel like May wanted him and Kazuya to be a ship so bad, but Miyuki was just like, oh, yes, I respect you. I will definitely do that. And then Salmer is starting to cry because he's so happy that they get to play with them. Right? I like that Nori and Kuramochi nearly crying. Kuramochi like tearing up where he's like, and then Zono just lets it all flood out, right? Miyuki's like, May, he's too cool to cry. He's too cool to cry. I mean, May cries at the end, but too cool for school. And then um, the poem about you who fought. Mm. So yeah, I like that we get everybody there in the zone and Miyuki's thinking about, he's thinking about May's hug and he's like, guys, I, I like that Miyuki takes, Miyuki takes May's hug as being like, it's like, okay, we're letting go. We're moving on now. We, we did our battle. Game's over. All right. I'm just amazed that TJ gave us a hug with May and Miyuki of all people. It's amazing. But Miyuki's like, okay, now our real fight starts. We've got to represent. He's like, May, May gave me a hug, damn it. He, he told us to go and do things for him. So we got to, we got to do our job and represent and I love that Samura's eyes are like from crying. He's just like, he just got all the lines under his eyes. And Zono's still crying. He's like never ending. And then Shunshin. Shunshin and them talk about how truly proud they are. And of course, there's the idea of moving on to the next stage, right? I feel like that's a sign from TJ. Like we need to move on with the manga to the next set. Man, but then we get my OTP. We get now and, uh, and Umamiya. Talking about Narmia getting pitch, getting beaten and 
Umamiya's like, all right, the next generation, huh? And then I love that Mukai is just like, oh, yes, very motivating. Now we have to go do our thing. And how dare you tease us with that? How dare you? I, I really hope he is working on Taito versus Ugamori. I hope so, because you tease us with that and then you don't give us that game. How dare you, sir? I hope he's working on it. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, our our guys from uh our guys from Ichidai, uh, they're leaving Kinks. And I'm sorry, but Amahisa Amahisa is being like, you better go there and come back a star bigger than Naramiya Sawamura. Look at him! I'm like, okay. I I just I feel like if anybody's gonna give, give, give Miyuki a run for his money, it's Amahisa. Because Amahisa Amahisa has so much faith in Sawamura. I feel like May, the way that May feels about Miyuki is the way that Amahisa feels about Saomura. I feel like that's a thing. And I I totally love the concept that that Amahisa would lay down for Saomura. <laughs> and Miyuki's like, what? And then we go back, then we go back to Sonata. Sonata and Raizo. And I love Raizo. Raizo's my, my favorite captain. I love Raizo so much. I mean, Kunitomo and Katioka are right up there with them. But Raizo's like my favorite because I like Sonata's like, well... And Sonata, he like says Salamura and Nori are capable of making all Japan. Sonata, my dude. And he's like, I wanted to have the opportunity to be at Koshin again. And Raizo's like, what are you talking about? As long as you don't quit baseball, you can get back up there. He's like, you can still make it to the top. Just don't give up. Oh my God. But oh my God. I just, I just, I, oh, let me, let me say first and foremost, a giant, huge thank you to the Discord. Because I have been badgering for months, ever since the end of volume 33. And even before then, I've been like, where's Raichi? Where's Raichi? Where is he? Is he here? And everyone in the Discord is like, we don't know. That's the big question. You all knew! You all knew where he was! And you didn't spoil me. I God, that makes me feel so good. But you know what? I got this for Christmas from a, a person in Japan sent it to me. It's of Raichi fishing. Um, it's adorable. Um, it it was the ultimate foreshadowing to him being to him being at Kochi. Kochi Prefecture at the house of my wife, ex-wife's parents. With his grandparents. He's with his grandparents at the beach. Raichi had a beach episode and we didn't even get to see it. TJ, that's so disappointing. <laughs> Frustrating. Where he's like, and of course Raichi, our simple banana boy, he's just like, the earth is round. Like a baseball. I want to slam the earth like our boy Raichi. He's back, baby. He's back. It's fine. He managed to make it through. It's all good. Oh my God. I just, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? And then, yeah. And then at that point, everybody from all across Japan wants to face Saomura. That's the kind of the cool thing though. And that, that makes it feel like kind of a resolution thing. Like everyone at Nationals wants to face Saomura, which is really the, the cool thing. Like, like the audiences are talking about Furuya because he's flashy, but the players are talking about Saomura. Like Mima, I love Mima. Mima won't leave Miyuki alone. He's like, he's like, let's meet at Koshin. Koshin, Miyuki Kazuya. Yeah, like he calls him by his full name. Oh my God. Mima, I, I want to see more with Mima and Miyuki. And, and then Hongo, I, no, seeing Hongo get excited about facing Saomura, never thought that would happen. And for the one guy to be like, you smiled and you didn't show it to us, TJ, how dare you? We want to see, I want to see Hongo versus Saomura. I want to see him smile, damn it. How dare them? How dare them? And then I, oh. Kunitomo being like, no, Itsuki, I'll go. And he goes anyway because it's Itsuki and he's a big puppy dog. But yeah, but Masa, of course, May's on the phone with Masa. And the thing of it is, whenever Kunitomo was going down into the locker room, I was fully expecting May to be having a breakdown, like in years prior, with like tears streaming down his face, like beating stuff up. But no, he is surprisingly calm. And Kunitomo... Seeing him. Of course, we see now that there's like tears coming down. And Kunitomo, 
He's like, you could have bowed out that ninth inning. He's like, you had a blister pop on your finger. And of course, Itsky didn't listen. He's listening from the side. He's like, you could have had people take your place. And he says, your arrogant attitude, your swollen pride that caused you to grin and bear it without complaint, and your sore loser streak that goes too far. To me, each of those qualities of yours was as valuable as treasure. And then, of course, of course, Itsky's like bawling at this point, right? But that, God, that moment where Kunitomo, and Kunitomo was smiling and like giving him the thing, and May's like shaking. He's like, I consider myself lucky to have you as a baseball player. And he thanks him. And he tells him to keep following his own path of baseball. Like you have all this time. I'm like, I, that means the world. The fact that Kunitomo gave him that praise. Like the fact that he did that. And then of course May cries, right? Of course May cries. And then that's when Chris and all the others show up. And it's like, oh my God. So yeah. So chapter 307, where they all go back home. They all like have all the food. All of the third years are like, oh, hey, remember the food and all of that stuff. And then they're, and then Chris, Chris, of course. Chris and Pai is like, did you feel fatigue? And he's like, I felt this crazy pressure. And he's like, we may have won the game, but I don't feel like I've beaten Army at all. And I love that both Chris and Miyuki are like, oh. He's like, I'm just amazed by how amazing he is. He's like, he's out of this world and I'm frustrated. And it's like, yeah, because that's a sign for Chris and Miyuki. They're like, good, this hasn't gone to your head. You don't think you're this unstoppable force that's unbeatable. You do think that there's room for you to improve. They're like, you don't feel satisfied. And at that moment, both Chris and Miyuki sang, he's like, that means you have room to grow. And Chris says what Salmer has been wanting to hear from Miyuki. Chris says it means your end goal is a ways off. Like, you're, you're not done here. You're going to keep going, right? You're not just going to end it at high school, right? And Sawamura, and then Chris saying, we can't let him outdo us, right? And Miyuki's like, right. Sawamura always provides me with a motivation boost. And Sawamura's like, what? Praise? Legit praise? He's like, my esteemed seniors? Why, why, why are you saying something so out of character? He's like, can you say it once more? I'm like, oh my God. And OTI has to ruin the mood. <laughs> I love the sound where I was like, I need you to repeat what you just said so I can etch it in my memory that my two senpais actually praised me. And I I can't get over like Salmura's little face, the little face that he has where he's like waiting to hear from Miyuki and Chris again. He's like, Pre please praise me some more. And it looks like Chris is actually praising him again because of course he would. But that face... And Asada's back there like, oh, look, Sombra's happy. And Kurumochi's like, oh, my God. But, yeah, Kateoka being really proud of him and Furuya. Because mm. that's the thing. It has been, it's been him and Furuya from the start, right? It's always been them, right, that has come up and done these amazing things. And I love that Furuya, for him, Ono and Nori were the two senpai that he wanted to acknowledge. Like Chris and Miyuki are Salmura's, but... Nori and Ono were his and he's like I'm so glad and they're and I love that that Nori's like I can't he's like I can't handle this praise from Furuya right he's like Furuya's rarely talkative and for him to be like like him to be so sweet there Nori's like can't take it him and Ono just crying right it's great and they're like whenever Furuya play, praises you it's like some kind of like wild animal you just gotta take it and run oh my god but yeah, and so I like I like this little moment we had with Yui and uh, with Yui and Masashi where they're like we're probably going to be taken off of the roster for nationals because there's only 18 players. Again, I wondered about that too because uh, we were talking in the Discord. They just passed a law in Japan changing that to 20. There's going to be 20 players instead of 18 for nationals, and it's like oh. So I'm wondering if I'm like well well. TJ, you've got to do another act now because you have to adjust the rules. <laughs> We've got to reflect those in the manga, right? Right? And then June saying he'll come to watch them at Koshin. I'm glad he did. 
I'm glad Junie's got his little soul patch now. I'm glad he decided to come. That was great. And then Chris and all of them leave. Everybody's still practicing. And then Furuya and Salamura are told by Miyuki not to pitch anymore. And that's when Salamura drops the bottle again. And Miyuki and, Nor and Nori are like, nope! What, what do you mean this has happened again? And, and Samura's like, oh, it's nothing. It's fine. And they don't really know about, like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff with Nori. And they're like, nope. We're not having this again. And I was like, TJ, if you, if you, we have one chapter left, you son of a bitch. If you have Samura sitting out the final chapter of this game, I'm going to lose my shit. And for a hot second... I really thought he was. And I was about to get really mad. I like I felt my ears getting hot. I was like, I'm about to lose it if you tell me that Salamura is not playing in this game. And it's beautiful and in color. It's great. I wish they had more of our guys in color too. I wish they had the last panel in color, right? Wish they had done that. But yeah, Miyuki and them and Furia, like everybody doing great. Nori's pitching. I'm glad that Nori gets some recognition and like his slider and stuff is doing really good. I'm glad for that. And then they're all ready for Salmur to come off the mound. And they're like, if he's announced, he'll grab all the attention. And then I love that Ono's been practicing with him. And then we have batting ninth pitcher Salmur Kuhn. I love that Ochi is just sitting there shaking. I'm like, get over it. You're fine. And then we find out that it'll heal as long as you don't pitch. It's just inflammation of your shoulder. It's fine. It's going to be okay. I'm actually really impressed that Miyuki is so mad. And Miyuki thinks it's his fault. He's like, is it because I made him throw a bunch of new pitches? I'm like, Miyuki, it's not your fault. But, but the fact that Miyuki blames himself for Salmura, that he's so invested, mm-hmm. And then he's like, well, it's a good thing that you guys won because if you kept pitching, that might have been really bad. And then Nori giving the ball to him. And I love that Miyuki, him teasing Salamura, he's like, just don't go slipping off the mound again. I'm like, that happened. Did that happen in one of these games? What are we doing? And then he says, the world, I won't look back at the past. The world is surely larger than what we can ever imagine. And there's all these great teams and stuff that you're not showing us. Right, she's back. I love, I love the idea that uh, Sonata's there watching over him. It's great. Right, she's back at it. Mm -hmm. No one knows what the future might hold. And May's with his team. And then Hongo's like sitting there just in the shadows waiting. Amahisa's looking good. He says, if we take one step, we might meet those who change our lives. And I joked in the moment that I was like, oh, June's there too. But honestly, if you look at, if you look at the people in this, in this panel, I mean, June's there. I wouldn't say, but yeah, June kind of did change Saomura's life, honestly. Because you have Miyuki, obviously. Furuya, obviously. Katioka, yes. Koshu, yes. Chris, yes. But June did give them that big speech about knowing what nationals taste like. So I guess that is true. I guess June does fit there as well. The people that changed his life are all in that panel. They're just missing Ray and they'd have everybody, right? But then Ray is at the forefront of the next page. So I guess it does work. And then we have Wakana and all of them. We have his family. The paths we choose for ourselves becomes a new map for us to navigate. Mm-hmm. And man, seeing how much, seeing how much his style has changed from the first to the last volume. It's crazy, right? And then, and he's that. And then that's that. And drawing him a smile. Smiling Ace of the Diamond. Fitting name for the final chapter. Fitting name. The new, beginning of the new Saumura legend. Hmm. I do like that. I do like that it's called the beginning of the new Saumura legend. I, I really appreciate that. Um, it's great, but God, just it's so frustrating. I, I don't feel satisfied, but I know it's not the end for several reasons. One, I'm really hopeful that they'll animate 
uh, these games coming up. I really hope that they will. Um, the only thing that maybe is a consolidation is that by the time that they're animating this part of the manga when they get to it, maybe Terajima will have started a new one and they'll tweak the ending to kind of reflect upon that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do. Um, there's such an unknown factor that we don't know what's going to happen with the manga and where it's going to go. And there's enough content to fill up easily a season of the anime, so that I'm not worried about. I know that, that Miyuki's voice actor has had some controversy with him in the media, like with affairs and things like that. But to be honest, they're having Jujutsu Kaisen come out in the summer and his characters, his voice is with a character there. So what do we do with that? But I, I don't feel satisfied with this ending, but I feel very hopeful it's not the true end of Ace of the Diamond. I feel like that last note from Terajima is a sign that there is more that he wants to do and I'm very hopeful for it. But I told myself I wasn't going to cry throughout this video and I, a month ago, I tried to go through like, I, I tried to record an opening just as a test and I bawled my eyes out because it was still so real to me. And right now my heart has, it's healed enough that I'm like, okay, hold it together. I nearly cried at the start of this video, but I've, I've reined it in. But I cannot state in words just how much this series means to me. It's become my favorite sports anime. The characters, I wish there was more merchandise, honestly. Otherwise, this whole room would be filled with Daya things. But alas, I have what is in front of me and I'll keep going with that. Um, but it honestly is such a good series. I've not encountered a series. It was. It's long. I feel like people are intimidated by it and they're afraid to start it because... They feel, they're like, oh my god, 175 episodes, like 70 volumes of manga between Acts 1 and Act 2. Like, that's so much. But honestly, it's worth it. It is a slow burn, but it's one of those slow burns that rewards you so many times over that I can't, I can't overstate the importance of this series. I feel like if you're someone that struggles being in a rut, if you're somebody that struggles with like the confidence of imposter syndrome or things like that. I feel like Sawamura is such an avatar and main character that is so relatable and he's such like a big boundless source of optimism that when I get down about something, I'll think about Sawamura and be like, no, that optimism is so wonderful and so needed, especially sometimes when, when you don't feel like you really have it in you. But and I'm getting teary-eyed again, damn it. I'm getting, I told myself I wouldn't. I was like, I like literally had a mental pep talk to myself before recording this, being like, you're not going to cry. <laughs> I, I didn't stand in front of a mirror and say that, but I was, it was just about. But this series is my favorite sports anime, and I, I love Croco's Basketball. I love it to pieces. It's so wonderful, and it's such a joy to talk about. I have so much fun in the Discord talking about it with people. It's wonderful, and I love Haikyuu. It brought me to it, and Slam Dunk brought me to the sports anime dance. And Run with the Wind is serene, like Sarune. But Sarune and Run with the Wind are so short; they feel so short-lived. And Haikyuu and Slam Dunk and Real, they're all great. And Kuroko's Basketball feels short, but it is wonderful too. But this. This is like all around, you can't go wrong. The characters are developed, the rival teams are developed, the themes don't get stale, they keep building upon each other. The rewards, the angst and pain is there. There are times in this manga and this anime that I was like crushed. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? How bad can it get? But then the rewards you reap for, for toughing it out are so, so wonderful. So I feel like I'll just repeat myself if I keep saying it, but this is, this is the definitive sports anime for me. It's going to be real hard to beat this, in all honesty. Even with the final volume here, it's going to be real hard to beat it. And my only thing now is that I'm, I'm currently, I'm reading a set of manga right now for reactions, and I'm about to review and go back through my 50 volumes of bleach back there in preparation for the new season and for recording reactions to it. So I'm going to be pretty busy with manga, but my hope is that periodically while we wait, 
I will have time. I've got on my Amazon Kindle, I've got some free volumes of Diet in the Wings. I've started back. I got through like five or six volumes of, of Act One and then kind of stopped to prepare for all this and other reactions. But my hope this spring, especially as we're getting into Spring Cotion, is to go back through the manga and then on Discord um, and Twitter posting images. Now that I'm caught up, I don't have to be spoiler tagged anymore. I can see everything. It's like great. It's like, yes, you can see everything now. Woohoo! So I'm excited about that, but um, but yeah, hmm. we can talk all we want to now, and there's no spoilers until until the next adventure comes out. So maybe this right here is a good jinx to get a new season to come out. Maybe we'll see. But I want to thank everybody that voted for this series and got me into watching it because I officially love baseball now, against all odds, and I'm excited to watch hopefully Summer Cotion again this year. Um, maybe see Spring Cotion if it comes up, and I'm able to. But I'm really excited, y'all, um, to be talking about Ace the Diamond in the comments and the Discord. Um, thank you to Patreon and patrons who have been so kind to help support me in watching this series and who have encouraged me to read this final volume because I, I didn't want to read it for a long time, but everybody was like, come on, you can do it. And I was like, all right. So to my boys, I, I love all of them. And I will eagerly anticipate Act 3 whenever it comes out. So I'm excited to hear your comments down below. But I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yes, I'll be back hopefully sooner rather than later with more of Ace of the Diamond. Bye.